this film? Uh, what inspired me to make the film? Mm -hmm. Well, I had met Marsha. Yes, hold on, let me continue. <laughs> I consented to be recorded. Yes. Uh, uh, what inspired me was I was working on a documentary for PBS mm -hmm. uh, in, in the year 2000 on a, a, script, a writer named Carl Foreman. It was all about his journey to the blacklist, about a letter he had written to Bosley Crowther, Crowther the uh, critic at the New York Times, uh, the film critic, about his journey through the blacklist. And Marsha came in to be interviewed for that documentary. And I didn't know who Marsha Hunt was. But I, I looked at her book when in doing research and I, I knew she had a story. And um, finally, I just felt like, gosh, I want to do a film. I think this would be really, really interesting. I, I just found her to be so sharp. And I mean, one thing you can take away from this film is she just she just carries the film, doesn't she? The way she tells her story, she, she, she pulls you right in. Yes. And, um, so that's what really inspired me. Um, Sarah, do we have any questions from um, our attendees? We sure do, Pamela. Um, so the first question is, what does Marsha most attrib or attribute to her long, long flourishing life and happiness? Well, if I had to, uh, my opinion is, is she's the most positive person you'd ever meet. I, I don't, I think she just, uh, even now, I, I try to visit, uh, Marsha is actually 103 in eight months, so we, in four months, she'll be 104. Uh, every time we, before we'll be talking, and every time she says to me, and what's next for us? She, even though she, she's resting and she's not running around with her head cut off anymore between activism and acting, she, she just embraces life. She's interested in people. She's in, that's why she was such a, a great activist because she really wanted to know about you and what makes you tick and how you feel and how you want things to be better. She, she just had that knack. I, I just think that she just, she's always looking forward to the next day. That's what I would say. Wonderful. Sarah, were there any others? There is. Well, there's one more from another um, community member, and then I have a question. But yes. um, did did Marsha take any acting lessons? And we kind of learned this was prior to the actual part portion in the documentary. But uh, Roger, could you um, kind of reiterate further? Well, no, that was the whole thing. She said she uh, she was against going to college. You know, she didn't want to. She didn't want to have to wait till her junior year to go, to act. She wanted to do it right then. So every, she was taking. Uh, she told me about Theodore Ir Irvine. It was uh, once or twice a week, and they would always put on a show. It was on Upper Broadway, and they would uh, always put on some sort of a play, and people would always just come in and um, see the shows. And um, she, uh, no, um, she didn't uh, take acting cl uh, classes, but she thought it was important acting was an important thing for young kids to keep them off the street. One thing I didn't put in the documentary was that in 1947, she started an acting class, uh, mm. community acting classes, mm. and then it, it, it and then she revisited it in the 50s. And in 1957, she started an acting program at um, in a tent. Um, and then a, first it was, she said, it was, first it was either a tent or a building. And it was on the early campus of, of CSUN. It was on the campus mm -hmm. of CSUN. And then eventually in the 60s and 70s, it got picked up and became part of the program. And some people listening might have even graduated from uh, every year. It's, this, uh, 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 it's the Teenage Drama Workshop. It started was started by her and another professor at CSUN. And um, it's 64 years old this year. Wow. And it's the longest running a uh, teenage drama workshop on a college country, a college campus in the country. So it's a wow. fascinating story. I couldn't put everything in right. the documentary. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's acting. 
Oh, geez. Oh, now the questions are rolling in. <laughs> Great. This is wonderful. Sarah, I do want to share. What's your question? Yeah. What's your question? Oh, oh okay. Sarah? Before they come in. Um, so you, Roger, you actually already started to answer this because I was curious. Well, one comment. It's so wonderful to see a woman of decorum these days. That's one. Two, <laughs> she did pursue some sort of mentorship. That was going to be my question because she developed those classes. So that's wonderful. <laughs> we well, already answered it. <laughs> well, no, but 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 the one thing that you know you might not really pick up from that one Chiron was she was really mentored by Eleanor Roosevelt. Yeah. She went on that trip around the world and she came back and she said, you know, I've been on the soundstage my whole life. What can I do? And it was Eleanor Roosevelt. She had already known about the uh, about the uh, the United Nations because she had been involved with radio broadcasts for the um, Declaration of uh, Declaration of Human Rights. But Eleanor Roosevelt told her about the United Nations Association and how it was a way to uh, help raise awareness for the UN to, for Americans. And she loved that. She's she loved speaking at civic groups. She loved talking about the United Nations. So she was, her mentor was, was really uh, Eleanor Roosevelt. And she told me that uh, Mrs. Roosevelt uh, stayed at a hotel, the Panhellenic Hotel, which was across the street from the United Nations. And she often went over and, and they had talks about how they could make this country better. How could they do things to improve lives, of the lives of people? And she, you know, she had these kind of, conversations. And I think she in turn uh, mentored people, uh, young people in the United Nations. You saw that one picture of mm -hmm. how she was handing out pamphlets at the Encino office. Yeah. So she really, she, that, she's heard from people that she's really made a difference in their life with her activism. And the, the last thing, sorry, the last question I was going to ask is that, well, it's um, another comment, but it's just so refreshing to hear that she was at the forefront actively trying to help our friends and neighbors that are unhoused. And I'd be really yeah. curious to see if, what her opinion is and what she believes could be the next step for, you know, our city, but that's kind of intense. So we don't need to go there. <laughs> well, I try, I try to, you know, at 103 and a half, she doesn't, you know, she's not as, sharp as she might have been and she is and then and i told her all about uh what it, i don't know if everybody knows that when stephanie klasky gamer in the film says our goal is to tear down this motel and put in its place a mm -hmm. state-of-the-art facility well that actually happened i believe last year they raised over i don't know 10 12 million they tore down that they mm -hmm. tore down that motel that fiesta motel and it is apparently la family house Housing is, is going gangbusters. They're, they're opening <laughs> shelters and apartments, and uh, but the, the actual facility where that motel was is now, I, I drove by, I haven't been, but it is a state of the art. Uh, uh, she kept her word. And, and, and you know, I have to tell you a story. When, when we went on that tour, Marsha, she's very old school. So she's, you know, she, she shows emotion, but she, be careful in public she doesn't want to show too much and she told me she came so close to crying when those residents hugged her and so I told her I said Marsha don't you realize that you know this is, that at the time it was 25 years ago I said 25 years ago you opened that shelter in you, when you opened that shelter you and your committee you planted the seed uh, and I told this the same thing about the 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 the, the, uh, the the theater too when she was invited 60 years later she was overwhelmed. I said, I told her in both times, all those years ago, you started it with just doing it without thinking about what was going to happen. And all these years later, you've lived, lived to see the fruits of your labor. And she mm -hmm. said, geez, I never thought of it that way. But that's what activism is. You do it yeah. from your heart. And if you, you are so lucky to live long enough, you can see that things are thriving. Definitely. I just wanted to read some comments um, that people have said, yay, Chicago, good old Western ethics, Midwestern ethics. Yes. 100% Marsha's causes are so important today, which is definitely, definitely true. Mm -hmm. You know, all of her activism is still so relevant um, all these years, decades later. Um, thank you for making this movie. Um, 
And then somebody did ask, is she still considered our honorary mayor of Sherman Oaks? Does anybody know that? <laughs> no, I'll tell you, she, it was from 1983 to 2001. Mm -hmm. And then what she did from that, and I don't know if you can tell from the documentary that she got together all the honorary mayors of all the Valley towns. And that's how they did the homeless work. Um, uh, that's how they, they did all their, they walkathons and their, and she, oh, she did blanket drives. This, this is how, how smart Marsha is. She doesn't just give blankets to the homeless. She researched it and she discovered that Mylar blankets were warm in the winter and cool in the summer, like the astronauts. Mm -hmm. And so they, they gave out those blankets. I mean, this is the type of, of person that she was. When she opened, she opened another shelter. Uh, it was the Rose Cottage for um, uh, abused women. It was a domestic violence shelter. It, it, it ran in Van Nuys for over 25 years, but she designed the rooms. She knew the furniture, the toys. She, she just doesn't give money. She puts her whole heart and soul into what she does. Um, we definitely need more people like Marcia. And, and you did catch that, and I think you said it in your opening, uh, she is, after the passing of Norman uh, Lloyd, her good friend who just passed away at 106, she's the last living star. She's the oldest living star from the golden age of film. So right in your backyard are Sherman Oaks. How about yeah. that? One of the first activists and, you know, yeah, trailblazer, really. Definitely a trailblazer. Um, somebody wanted to say, please thank her for her tenacity in moving forward the moral, the moral needle. She is a true inspiration. Yes, and let me say something about that. I'm glad you thank you for that because there's a real Father's mm -hmm. Day message uh, in this film. I'm so glad you showed it this weekend because for me, and I tell this to Marsha all the time just so she remembers, I think the real essence of the film is the Roy Brewer story when when he said, I know your father. I know him from, you know, from mm -hmm. Wilshire Method Methodist. I know him to be a good man. Then he wanted, she, he wanted her to sign this piece of paper, which was an absolute lie. And she said, well, that Earl Hunt that you thought so much of uh, taught me not to lie and you're asking you me to go against my father's teachings I was so I mean even just to hear it on the screen myself mm -hmm. just so powerful to me yeah definitely um I just wanted to make a note that the um over the ending credits the woman you heard singing was Marsha Hunt correct yes it was yes it yes. was so that was really great to hear and then where can we get her book her book about all of her styles that she well uh she has some at home in her garage oh. but no I mean so if every if you uh in my email uh Raj C memos at gmail.com uh please feel free to drop me a note if you uh, since Mar Marcia doesn't get to read mail as much I've been asking people to send notes dear Marcia to my email and I read them to her when I visit but if anyone wants to buy the, her book, I believe they're $50 and um, I can put you in touch with her business manager. That's awesome. She, they're on Amazon, I, I think as well, but she also has some at her home. Okay. Um, do, are there any more questions, Sarah? That yeah, we um, yes, more keep rolling in, but are uh, there more along? Well, there was one question that we kind of tapped into. Um, how does Marsha view the world today and have the thing have things changed for the better? And then there's some uh, later follow up comments. That's a good comment. But uh, interestingly enough, the mind has a way of protecting you at 103, because mm -hmm. I truthfully don't believe I'm, I've, I've been with Marsha when she watches the news. And I I don't think that she takes it in the way because she was always so on top of her game. And, I think at 103, you're allowed to just relax and go with the flow. Um, she's still quite with it, but I don't think that she's, um, I try to keep her up on United Nations and hunger and we talk about the homeless and about LA family housing, but I, I we don't talk about uh, politics. I think that, I think because if she, if she really knows, I mean, I live in Mar Vista, 
I live three less than three miles from Venice Beach. I haven't been in so long. And oh. I was in tears reading the paper, seeing the pictures yeah. of, of the homeless encampments at, at Venice Beach, because that was not the Venice Beach I I Grew knew with. living there, Correct. you know. So if, if if Marcia saw that, it would break her heart. You know, we try to keep uh, we didn't tell her about her good friend Norman Lloyd's passing. Who wants to be, you know, do you want to do you want to be known as the last person in Hollywood alive? Right. Or so we're just right. kind of protective of her and we talk about her victories. So uh, we she did so much that's not even in the film. I can't even she was one of she did a telethon for cerebral palsy in 19. Uh, 51 and then she did one in 52 that was 36 hours it was a broadcast record wow. in Oakland California her Ralph Edwards and Jack Webb I mean she's just dynamic she's just dynamic and can you imagine writing a a, a, a song about uh, marriage equality at, at 95 right. I mean who does that and she told me the other night she thinks she has another song coming and I said, well, you tell your nephew, Alan, and he'll write it down and he'll play it on the piano. We wow. talked about it because she doesn't play the piano. She just said, here's the music in her head. Yeah, so nice. She really is a Renaissance woman. Yeah, definitely. That's so beautiful. Um, uh, uh, one comment was, yes, the documentary was very moving. And then, oh, I love the words and the meaning in that song too, in her voice as well. Um, and then there's another follow-up question. Uh, Marsha and the others who purchased the hotel in North Hollywood to house the homeless people created a model that both the state of California and the city of Los Angeles are following now. Wow. Thank you for saying that. Mm -hmm. It's true, though. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Very true. Oh, this would, it would break her heart if she really, really, really knew about the homeless. She just. Yeah. Uh, we um, the one thing that I loved in the film was Valerie Harper Comparing her oh, to Princess Diana. Valerie Harper. Yeah, Valerie's great. And um, I just thought that that was so moving because it's so true. Um, you know, the comparison of the work that they both um, did. Um, she was right in there. And again, I couldn't, I couldn't fit in the part about in the late 70s, there was a big anti-hunger movement. And it was uh, on the forefront were Marsha Hunt, Valerie Harper, Harry Chapin, John Denver, Raul Julia, De Dennis, um, I must say Dennis Hopper, Dennis, I can see him, um, Dennis Weaver, and a, a bunch of other people. But Valerie, when I was interviewing her, he can't believe the words came out of her mouth. She was just a wonderful actor, but a brilliant, heartfelt activist. And, and she started, you know, she and Dennis Weaver started the LA Regional Food Bank. That also went on for oh about thirty years. I think it, I think it only recently closed, or it may be open now in a smaller version of itself. But she was just as powerful and dynamic uh, in the in the hunger movement as Marsha. Wow, wow. Well, everyone, thank you again for joining us tonight for our first dinner and a movie. Ooh. I just want to reiterate that if you want to reach Roger with any other questions about Marsha Hunt and his journey to complete this wonderful film about Marsha or any other questions you have about Marsha, please email him at, um, Roger, why don't you, I think I have it. R-O-G-C-M-E-M-O-S, rogcmemos at gmail.com. And everybody, we ask that you please be active in your community. We encourage you to be involved in what happens within your city by joining the neighborhood council or being in one of the many committees within the council. If um, please go to shermanoaksnc.org for more information. There's a calendar you can sit on any committee. You can be an attendee or a participant, um, but we do um, encourage you to be involved in what happens in this beautiful city that Marsha Hunt has um, put into motion all of these um, programs and and please be a part of it. Roger, do you have any last words? I have one more thing that I almost forgot. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying now to get Marsha the Medal of, let me get it right, the Medal of Freedom. And I started a change.org petition. We got over a thousand people. And I'm Norman Lear, who helped me, uh, gave me some money for the documentary. He's gonna try to get to Joe Biden. I don't know if he knows anyone. So if anybody who's listening has any connection to Joe Biden 
or the White House to uh, we can get the nomination in. Yeah, I'd like to. We're, I'm trying really hard to do that because it's. Uh, I don't think there's any committees. I think the president can just do it at his discretion. So if anyone has any bright ideas, please please uh, let me know. That's it. And thank you so much. I'm truly honored to have showed this film tonight. Roger, I'm just so happy that we could do this. I know it's been a few months in the, the, okay. the making well of the getting you to do this, but um, wow, what a night. Sarah, do you have any closing words? Other than thank you, a thousand thank yous. And I'm actually taking screenshots of all the comments <laughs> oh, thank you. for Roger, because I and really want him to Marcia. see. I will yeah, that's America. right. Yeah, that's right. So, wait, wait, wait. This, sorry, there's so many hands on the ca on the camera. I'm so sorry, everyone. <laughs> um, Roger, please thank Marsha for us, and I also I want to thank absolutely. Harold Shapiro Harold, and um, Jeffrey Hartso and Sarah for absolutely. putting this together and doing the. Thank you. Yeah, we did a few test runs and a few meetings. So really want to thank Harold and Jeffrey for their technical support. Thank you. Roger for this beautiful movie and everything that you've done. Oh, you're the best. Thank and, you for um, inviting me. <laughs> oh, my pleasure. And it's and, on Blu-ray and DVD. Yes. That's sold, sorry. <laughs> oh no, that's, no, no, please pitch I'm away. terrible at promoting myself. <laughs> And Sarah, thank you very much. Absolutely. <laughs> thank you. Everybody, so thank you for a wonderful thank evening. Thank you for attending. Us. Yeah. Oh, we keep the, we just keep, oh, this is wonderful. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <Dessert> time. <laughs> oh, no more questions. No more questions. Just more comments. I'll send them to you in the morning, Roger. <laughs> thank you. That's a pleasure. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Good Have everyone. a good night. Go. Thank you. Bye. See ya. Thank you, Roger. Bye. Bye-bye. Yeah.